Did you know that you can geofence inside of Google Ads? If you don't know what geofencing is, it's essentially setting up a virtual boundary line and you can target your advertisements to people within that area. And it gets better. You can actually target specific audiences within that small geographic radius. And so in this week's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that inside of Google Ads. My name is Scott Redgate. I'm a digital marketing coach. I've managed well over $50 million in Google Ads. And if you want to save some money inside of your Google Ads account, make sure to grab my free PPC cost cutting cheat sheet. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash cheat sheet. And I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, let's dive in and let me show you how simple this is. So I'm gonna show you how you can target not just a specific area in Google Ads, I've got a video on that. I'm gonna show you how you can target a super specific area to a specific group of people. Now, why in the world would you want to do this? Well, let's say, for example, your business is potentially going to a conference or a festival or an event, and you want to have more awareness. You want people as they're pulling out their phones to see your business's advertisement. You're not necessarily looking to drive conversions. This is more of an awareness play. And so your goal is to essentially drop a GPS pin on a specific area and have your ad show there. So let me show you how you can do that. And let me show you how easy it is to do this inside of Google ads. So I'm going to hit this plus sign here to create a new campaign. And then right here, I'm going to select create a campaign without guidance that opens up every different campaign type inside of Google ads. I'm going to select display for this option. So I'm going to select continue. You're going to enter your business's website. So for me, that's scottredgate.com. And I'm going to select continue. Now you need to name the campaign. My recommendation when you name a campaign is have it consistent with the other campaign names inside the account. I'm just going to call this geofence test. All right. And then I'm going to select continue. Now, this is the main section that we're going to spend some time in. So obviously, by default, if you want to target a super specific area, you're not going to use the all countries and territories options. You're not even going to use the country option right here, which is United States. I'm based in the United States. What we're going to select is enter another location, and then I'm going to select advanced search. Now, this pulls up the entire map of the world. Now to get the smallest area that Google actually allows you to target, we're going to select radius. I'm based in Virginia. I used to live in Charlottesville and Crozet, Virginia, and there's a popular festival that happens in Crozet called the Arts and Crafts Festival. So let's say you wanted to target people that were attending this festival. Well, first off, I'm going to copy the address of where this festival is. I'm going to go back into my campaign. Now, first things first, I want to find the smallest unit of distance here, which is going to be one kilometer. And then I'm going to paste in the address that we just got from Google Maps, and I'm going to select include. So you can see when you look at the map, how small of a radius this is targeting. Now, if your goal is to drive tons of clicks and impressions, this is not the campaign for you. You're probably going to be underwhelmed when you look at the results of this. But if you do it the right way, you're going to be confident that most of the impressions that you did get were from people that were attending this event. So I'm going to hit save, but we're actually going to come back here. So on this left hand side where you see targeting, um, I'm going to add a layer of targeting to this because by default, you're going to be targeting houses and people that are renting around that area. And so if you're fine with that, like if it's a small geographic radius and you're okay with that, then perfect, keep it as we had it. But if you wanna add an additional layer to this, what you can do is you can select add targeting, and then I'm going to select audience segments. And so let's say I want to use one of Google's audience for people that are into crafts or DIY. What I can actually do is I can search for crafts and then I can actually see right here, I can see people that are in the market, or at least Google's classified them as that, for DIY crafts. So I'm going to select that. And what you'll actually notice is that the available impressions went up. And let me tell you why that happened. That's because Google has by default set optimized targeting set to on. This can go beyond your campaign settings. So you want to make sure if you're going this path that you unselect the optimized targeting option. 
Now, I'm actually gonna hop back to that location option because there's one thing that you need to make sure that you select, and that is that you are going to select presence instead of presence or interest. Presence is people that are in or regularly in your targeted location. So you wanna make sure that you select presence in this case. But even by the definition of presence, you might be targeting people that are traveling to that area regularly, and so that might increase the clicks to people beyond what your intent was. So again, if I was trying to target people attending this arts and crafts festival, and I have presence selected, which is the better of the two options, I might be targeting people that were in that area you know, one week ago or whatever. And so you're probably gonna hate me for the next step that I'm gonna tell you that you can do, but inside of advanced options, unfortunately you cannot exclude specific radiuses in this screen. That would be amazing if you could go in and you could exclude other circles. And so you were truly just targeting the specific park where that festival was. But the best that you can do is in this location option, you can start excluding nearby towns, and so I'll exclude Waynesboro, I'll exclude Charlottesville, which is a nearby town. And you can see as I zoom out on the map, you can see that I'm targeting this super specific area, and then I'm excluding some of the nearby towns. And you're going to want to be pretty thorough with this. Honestly, to get the best results, you're probably going to want to add every nearby town and probably even some of the bigger cities within a 200 mile radius. But again, this is not mandatory, but with how Google Ads is this year, and this is, I mean, compared to 10 years ago, you didn't have to go through this many hoops. They are making it harder to do, but it can still be an effective strategy for you. But again, keep in mind, this is not going to drive a ridiculous amount of clicks and impressions unless that very specific area that you're targeting is heavily populated or will be heavily populated at the time of the event that you're targeting. Okay, so we've got our location set. We've got locations excluded and again you're going to want to have that list be larger than that and we also went with the additional step of layering in a specific audience which is diy crafts so i'm going to be targeting people that are in the market for diy crafts in that specific area and then the next step is honestly just creating your advertisements so you can upload your own display ads or you can go in and create a responsive display ad if you don't have any to upload. You're going to review your campaign and then you're going to publish it and that is it. Again, this is a very edge case campaign that I would ever create in a Google Ads account. But for some businesses with those edge cases, maybe there's a super popular conference or an event, this could be an effective strategy. But do not think that this is going to drive a ton of conversions or clicks or impressions. It's going to be a very small number.